Welcome to Pagan Perspective. This is Tara, your Tuesday subspeak host, and this week's topic has to do with elementals. Our topic for this week was given to us by Emo Gothcott, who would like to know if we know anything about elementals because they've been told that they have one by a good friend. According to my sources, it seems that Paracelsus was the first person to come up with the idea of elementals as such. Paracelsus was a renaissance alchemist and occultist, among other things. Since magical practitioners love their elemental correspondences, it seems they latched onto this idea of having another correspondence to the four or five elements, and they took Paracelsus's four elemental beings and this idea of elemental beings and didn't really take all that much else from his ideas about of elementals. Instead, it seems, they took these names and ran with them in their own respective directions. From then on, we really see the term elemental being used in a multitude of ways, explaining all of the different ways people have and do and could use the term elemental is beyond the scope of a YouTube video. I found it a very general definition on Wiktionary, and I rewrote it a bit. It goes like this. An elemental is a being, creature, or spirit that is attuned with, composed of, and or inhabits one of the Greek classical elements, air, earth, fire, water, and sometimes ether. It can also be some sort of being that can control or affect a certain natural force, for example, hurricanes. It's usually understood and used as a category of certain kinds of beings or spirits, but what fits into that category can vary. One use of the term that seems to be becoming increasingly common these days invokes broad animistic sorts of beliefs, whereas another, perhaps more traditional way of using the term focuses more on the actual Greek classical element. This belief can, can range from a single sort of archetypal being or guardian of water as an element to a plurality of beings that reside within water wherever water shows up in the world. Most conceptions of elementals would not link them to animals or people. Elementals are usually derived by people picking out different mythological and magical creatures and associating and linking them to a particular element. Paracelsus's version of naming the elementals is by far the most common, but there is a wide variety. Paracelsus was open to the idea that a lot of these spirits and creatures from folklore and pagan myths might actually exist and have been created by the Christian god. He's not convinced that they're necessarily evil, and because they're not actually mentioned in any of the scriptures, he takes a lot of time trying to imagine and speculate about how they could fit into his Christian worldview. In his book on nymphs, sylphs, pygmies, and salamanders, Paracelsus goes into depth discussing what exactly elementals are and what they do and what their worlds are like. According to him, among elementals, there are the water people, the mountain people, the fire people, and the wind people. He says, those in the water are nymphs, those in the air are sylphs, those in the earth are pygmies, those in the fire are salamanders. These are not good names, but I use them nevertheless. The names have been given them by people who did not understand them. The name of the water people is also Undina, and of the air people Sylvesters, and of the mountain people Nomai, and of the fire people Vulcani. Basically, Vulcans. I know. Elementals for him are not spirits. They are physical. They have flesh, blood, and bone, as he says. They're sort of a mix between humans and spirits. He believes that humans are the only beings in the world with souls. Spirits do not have souls, but are eternal. Elementals are physical and mortal and, and much like humans, but they don't have souls. They eat, drink, walk, work, have children, catch diseases, can be injured or killed. As he puts it, humans are the flesh that is from Adam, and elementals are the flesh that is not from Adam. Adam being Adam and Eve, you know. According to him, one kind of elemental can't interact with other kinds of elementals, as in, elementals of water can't interact with elementals of wind. He claims that humans can see and interact with elementals, and that this is the will of God, so that we can see how marvelous God is in his works, that he does not leave any element void and empty without having great wonders in them. He claims that each elemental has its own chaos, and he uses this term in kind of a unique way. Chaos is an elemental's nothing, it's what exists between the ground and the heavens. It's basically the elemental's element. It's what they move through easily and basically what they breathe. They can't be harmed by their own element, but they can be harmed or killed by others. A sylph, for example, an elemental of air, would burn in fire, suffocate in rock, and drown in water. 
The mountain people move through rock as easily as we move through air. And just as we would suffocate in rock, they would suffocate in air. For salamanders, the fire people, the world they move about in is fire. The heavens above them is air, and the ground below them is earth. Each elemental also has its own drink, and it has a different element, which is its soil from which its food grows. For example, water is the soil of the nomai, so their food grows from water. As far as what they look like, he says, The water people look like men, both women and men. The Sylvesters, which are air people, do not conform, but are cruder, coarser, longer, and stronger than both. The mountain people are small, of about two spans. The salamanders are long, narrow, and lean. He says that strange structures that occur in cave and rock and mountains are the work of the mountain people, and that the fire people's yelling and working can be heard in volcanoes. He believes that elementals live much as humans do, but in a world that's not entirely the same. And sometimes, due to birth abnormalities, they can produce monsters. Sirens are monsters to the water people, giants to the sylphs, dwarfs to the pygmies, and will-o'-the-wisps to the salamanders. He says that when a monster is born, it signifies impending disaster, usually corresponding in some way to that element. Paracelsus goes into a lot of detail explaining how all this works and how it makes sense within a Christian standpoint, or at least his Christian standpoint. And now on to the question of having an elemental. To be honest with you, most of the ways that I use the term elemental, it wouldn't make sense at all to have an elemental that you would call your own. Paracelsus does mention people being able to interact with and even marry and have children with elementals. In some folklore, certain kinds of what you might call elementals are said to have no soul and to therefore to seek sexual union, impregnation, or marriage in order to obtain one. Magical practitioners can work with elementals, and some people might think that they can also become interested in specific people. I've read of spirits that can become attached to a certain per person, though generally that tends to be a negative thing. I've also seen some ideas of elementals that seem to consider them like a different kind of angel. People's different ideas about what elementals can, can be can get really diverse and creative, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it does mean that it makes it really difficult for me to explain to you what someone else is talking about, because... I don't know. This friend of yours who told you that you have an elemental? I have no idea what they meant. If you would like to ask your friend and then let me know what they meant, I would be really interested to find out, honestly. I imagine that they could mean something sort of like a guardian angel. They could mean some sort of spirit that's interested in or attached to you. They could have meant that you have an element which is different. But speaking of having an element, I suppose it's possible that if you consider yourself as being attuned with a certain element, you could also consider yourself as having some sort of elemental being or spirit that is in tune with you, or attached to you, or attracted to you because of that. That's a possibility. I've never heard of it before. I just made it up. But... I don't know. The question then would be, though, is it actually an elemental being or spirit that's specific to you, or is it something that's just very generally associated with that element? In which case, I don't know why you would call it yours, Unless you're saying because you are the element of fire that the salamander or whatever you think associates with that dragon, whatever, is your elemental because it's like your elemental sign or something. So I know that doesn't really entirely answer your question, but it's a difficult question to answer. I hope you found some of that helpful anyway and that I didn't bore you by going on and on about Paracelsus. If I'm acting a little weird in this video, it's probably because 1. I am weird. 2. My eye will not stop twitching, and I feel like I'm filming the entire video like this. I hope you all have a lovely day.